Welcome to the 61st edition of Festival dei Popoli. Um, I'd like to ask you a few questions on Look Down Below. And um, this is the third uh, entry in a trilogy of films that you written with uh, Mark von Schlegel, right? So mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to know how, how do how the two of you work together? If uh, it's you that you come up with an idea, a concept, or like a, a brief narration that he elaborates and then you do the visuals or is it the other way around? Yeah, no, it's, it's pretty much like that. Um, um, I have a kind of idea of, of where I want to start and, and I, uh, I start writing the kind of the ingredients, the basic kind of narrative or ideas um, and usually I've got the location in my mind first but I don't always tell him what the location is so that with the first film slow action I had these four islands that I was filming on around the world and um, I didn't tell him anything about where I was going I just said um, that I was making a film about uh, four future utopian islands or archipelagos um, and gave him a few ingredients of what I wanted those different societies to look like um, and then he started to elaborate on that and then it's and then it's usually like a, a long back and forth conversation as as we kind of build the narrative and we often um, share book lists with each other so um, yeah, uh, things that we've been reading, which which are relevant to the project. Um, so with look then below, um, yeah, there's uh, things like Jules Verne's Journey to the Center of the Earth um, or The Coming Race by Edgar Bulwer Linton, which is less well known, and things like this. So we we um, yeah, we kind of try to influence each other in the way. And with, with Look Then Below, um, at first, the narration that he, he wrote um, was very, it, it was quite, um, descript it was sort of overly descriptive for me. It was too, like, um, novelistic uh, narration and I wanted it to become more like a prose poem. And he'd never really written poetry before. So it was a kind of challenge to him to, to write, to kind of rewrite this, um, this more kind of journalistic even um, version of the narration into, a, into a, a kind of more poetic form. And as the film c continues, um, and you get this sense that there's a communication between the person visiting the cave and the beings that live within the cave. And so the beings that live there, they're trying to communicate back through poetry. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a really, really nice collaboration where we, we it's, it's very fun. It's usually just online back and forth. Um, we don't we don't talk that much mm -hmm. it's all kind of written okay uh, I, I wrote a beautiful sentence by you sentence by you uh, that says that the films are not representation of something else but they are world unto themselves so uh, coming to the outstanding visuals of these films I I had the uh, the impression which always come when I when I look at your films that they are something very somehow futuristic and new but they go back to the origin of cinema because uh, it's like you're reasserting the power of cinema in the simple simple uh, connection between words and images sounds and uh, colors so is it something that, that that works for you is it is it true that you like feel this as well yeah yeah no thanks for saying that because it's it's um that is definitely something that I, I think about. I, I feel like I'm influenced by the whole history of, of cinema. Um, and, and I think um, 
you know, I really believe in it as as a as an art form, obviously. And um, and what I what I've always liked about it is the way that it can, um, yeah, transform the actual world into something else. And um, there's nothing like going back to the early cinema to to learn when you look at silent cinema to sort of learn about this. Um, some of these very simple um, transformations that can happen within the cinema that that, um, that we kind of allow ourselves to fall into in such a beautiful way, um, and yeah. So I, I mean, I, I never want to be um, you know to fall. You've got to be careful to not fall into any traps of um, sort of postmodernism, or, or um, I, I, I don't want to make. Um, you know, parodies of anything. It's just more like um, kind of just learning from the earlier um, kind of works that were made. And I think that that transition as well that happened between uh, silent cinema and sound cinema and the filmmakers that really uh, kind of realized what to do with it because obviously a lot of films became really boring and that continued actually to today um is um very um films so so full of um uh kind of explanation um and you know as Bressel said they're more like films theater um but then you had these other filmmakers like Fritz Lang. Oh, you watch those early sound films of his um, and you, you, you start to see the possibilities of, of the relation between sound and image. And I'm really excited about that. And yeah, Carl Dreher and people like that. So yeah, it's, it's, it's good to learn from your, you know, your heroes, but then try to then, yeah, yeah. You you translate that into, you know, your contemporary mind, and yeah. Yeah, but I also feel that there was um, somehow a faith in the power of the images in, in that uh, period. You know, the uh, the um, the early the twenties, especially. You mentioned Fritz, Fritz Lang, but I always think of Murnau, for example when like in a movie like The Last Laugh or you know, The Last Man, it kind of like, there is no, there are no words, even no written words, or only images. So mm. uh, you, you must have a, a faith in what you're showing. And uh, we are now kind of afraid of, uh, of this, of the power of the images. So we need explanations. And uh, I feel that what you do in that sense, you go back to that kind of spirit. But you also, also mentioned uh, the, the idea of a transformation that might happen uh, that must happen when you when you watch a, a movie and of, of course we imagine uh, look them below as the opening film for this new doc explorer section and uh, it's really sad not to be uh, to not have a chance to, to screen it on the on the big screen because i feel that that transformation that you to talk about uh, can happen just like you know the the the, the voyage uh, of your film into a cave. If you go down deep in the dark, which can only happen in the in the cinema venue, uh, where where you experience that mysterious thing that is the the collective viewing of a film in a dark place. So, what do you what do you think about that? I mean, I'm of course open to all kind of uh, screenings, and we are going online with the festival, but mm. it's something else. What do you think? Well, for sure. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm always happy that the, the film's being shown and uh, even pre-pandemic, we had to get used to the idea of our films being seen in, in a multiple uh, different ways. Um, but nothing for me beats the cinema. So it's, it's, it is a difficult, um, it's a difficult time, I think, in terms of that, in terms of that, exactly what you're talking about, that collective experience of being in the dark with a bunch of strangers and, you know, being taken on this, um, 
journey. Um, and uh, that, that's very hard to um, ask of an audience actually when they're watching maybe on their computer with other distractions and um, it's small, you know, that, that I, I want that cave to feel like it's you're in it as you know, it's, it's life size and you're, you're making that journey into the cave, um, which is, yeah, that's, that's quite a big ask when you're <laughs> watching on the computer, which is this, this uh, device that we use for everything now. Um, it's, it's, um, it doesn't quite have that same magical power, I think. So yeah, I'm, I'm really missing that at the moment. Um, I did, I showed the look then below, um, before the, the pandemic started, I showed it as an installation and it, that worked really nicely because it was a big, very big projection and you, you go into this dark room and, and yeah, you really feel, you feel it more and you feel the sound more and the, the, the sound is 5.1. So you, you're getting all this kind of cave-like reverb as well. So that's, that's another thing that I really miss is, is, is sound. It's, it's something that people, um, uh, you know, they, they're often not able to kind of recreate that experience at home. Yeah. So I know you've been working on other films, so let's hope that this situation will get will be over soon and uh, we'll have a chance to, of course, meet again, like we used to in different festivals, but also that you have a chance to come to Firenze next year with some of new projects. Yeah, I'd love to. Let's, let's hope that um, that can happen. I was looking forward to coming just uh, until very recently. So yeah, I'm sorry you had to no. go on offline, online. <laughs> 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 okay, thank you very much. Well, we'll keep in touch and see you soon. Okay, thanks. Thanks for sharing the film and yeah. Thank you. It's Take a care. Pleasure. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>